Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the Celestron Nexstar 6 Evolution Series. This is the third generation of Celestron's popular mid-price line of Alt-As mounted computer-controlled schmidt cassegrain telescopes. Now, generation 1 came out around the year 2000. Those had gray tubes, considered very good for their time. By today's standards, perhaps not so much. They had accuracy and reliability problems. The optical tubes were pretty good, but they were difficult to separate from the base and they didn't use the current standard Vixen compatible dovetail plate. The second version is the Nexstar SE. Those were orange tubed models somewhere around the year 2010. Those are very popular and there were many improvements made. Those are better versions than generation one. So generation three is the Nexstar Evolution that you see here many improvements made both mechanically and electronically. So let's take a look at some of these features and help you decide if this telescope is right for you. And here we are with three generations of Nexstar series. Gen 1, somewhere around the year 2000. Gray tube, this is sometimes referred to as the Nexstar I series. In the middle here, we have the second version, that's Nexstar SE, somewhere around the year 2010. And of course, on the far right here, we have the Nexstar Evolution Series under consideration here. So if you know your Nexstars, you can tell this is a radical redesign. So first of all, everything's a lot bigger and beefier. This one's a lot more steady. I can tell having this one next to my SE model, this one's just a lot more solid. Also, you'll notice little things here. They've uh, built, built in a battery here. Anybody who has ever driven to a remote location and forgotten your battery can appreciate this. I have some minor concerns about what might happen in the long term when that thing starts to fail, but I'm sure the community will come up with a solution long before those become an issue. Second thing here is there's a couple of conveniently molded in carrying handles here. This may seem like a small thing, but I'll tell you, having moved this thing around, they're just in the right spot for you to carry this. Also, the hand controller here looks similar but the number of options you have for aligning this thing has just ballooned since that first Nexstar series back in the year 2000. So when you first come to this from another Nexstar or indeed from any other go-to mount, you may be momentarily kind of confused as to where to plug in the hand controller because there is no dedicated port that says hand controller. Rather, there are four ports labeled AUX, A-U-X. You can plug the hand controller into any one of those four ports. Now you could be asking, why do I need four ports? Well, it turns out once you start plugging in these toys, the star sense, the GPS, you know, whatever else you're going to come up with in the future, those ports start to fill up pretty fast. And in fact, if you have the GPS unit, it actually has a pass through so that you can hook the, you can hook the hand controller up to that and free up another port. So another feature I like on this new model are these big orange clutch knobs. Boy, I wish I had those on my SE, but on that one I had to just kind of grab it and move it around. So there are so many different ways to align this thing now. We don't have time to go through all of them, but I'll walk you through some of the more common ones. You can use the traditional two-star line where you pick two stars in the sky, you move the scope there, and it calculates the position of the sky and builds a model and off you go. I've done a dummy align indoors and it thinks it's pointed at Altair right now. So if I want to go to, I've got the uh, Dumbbell Nebula here, Messier 27, you put, dial it in and it goes. So I found that the accuracy of this is better than on my Nexstar SE. I have complained about the accuracy of that thing in the past. Uh, however, it's not perfect. I found at all parts of the sky, it would place the object in the field of a generic 25 millimeter plossal, although not always in the center. And I have to keep mentioning that because I think many beginners are under the assumption that the computer is always going to place every object in the center of the field all the time. Not always the case. There will be parts of the sky where it will be more accurate than others. Another thing to note is there are different kinds of two star lines out there on the market. Some of them, like Celestron's AVX mount, for example, you dial in the star and it starts to move the mount towards the star for you, gets it into the general vicinity and does some of the heavy lifting for you. On this next star, you have to manually move the scope to the two stars and dial them in. 
So one traditional disadvantage of that two star line is you have to know the names of the stars up there and many beginners get stuck there. So it's kind of a catch 22 in order for the telescope to teach you about the night sky, you have to know enough about the night sky to teach it. And again, this winds up being a stumbling block for some people. So in this model, there's something called sky align. And on sky align, all you do is point the telescope at three bright objects in the sky. It's any three bright objects, center them in the eyepiece. It will then know based on its internal model where it is. I've done this several times on this one and I find the sky align to be about as accurate as the regular two star line. So of course it's no longer the year 2010. You can do the sky align through the traditional hand controller here or you can download Celestron's Sky Portal app, which I've done on this tablet here, and you can do the sky align, same procedure, except through the tablet. So once you establish a connection, it's unsecured, there is no password, you have complete control over the telescope. Okay, so what else can you do with this thing? Hmm. Oh yeah, you can go observing with it. You know, it's easy to get bogged down in all this technology and these features, all of that electronics is at the service of you going observing. So these C6 optical tubes are so consistent and reliable, it's actually kind of boring to talk about them. This one is no exception, it's fine. I saw very little spherical aberration or aberrations of any other kind. I think you're gonna be very happy if the one you get is just like this one. Once I had this aligned, I had a lot of fun looking at tons of objects in Sagittarius. It's late summer as I film this. You know, the showpiece objects like the Dumbbell Nebula M13 and M15, easy to see. The rings of Saturn are easy. The four moons of Jupiter are very easy, as are cloud belts on Jupiter. One night I had this thing out and it was some of the steadiest seeing I've had in a very long time, like in over a year. I just happened to have my planetary imager with me and not only could I get a steady image of Jupiter and Saturn, I actually had the opportunity to put the Barlow in there and it was still steady. Had a little help from a club member to post process this, but, and that's probably the best image of Jupiter and Saturn I've ever taken through a C6. So it's only a six inch only, how deep can you go? Well, I'll give you one of my favorites this time of year. Try this one, it's semi-obscure. NGC 6934. It's a globular cluster in Delphinus, and it's not visually all that exciting, but the reason you want to look at this is because of its distance. That globular is 50,000 light years from Earth. Think about that. The entire Milky Way galaxy is only about 100,000 light years in diameter. This thing's 50,000 light years out there, out there in the boondocks. So here we are with the next R6 evolution after a long night of observing. I had a lot of fun with this thing. I looked at many objects. I find this a very pleasant telescope to use in its automatic mode. I also had a chance to compare it to my Nexstar 6SE, and I felt that the optical tubes were very similar. That is, they're both very good. And there have been some gains made in this mount. I feel that this new one is sturdier, and the electronics are slightly more accurate. I did feel, however, that despite the gains made in this new Nexstar mount, my AVX, that's my Celestron Equatorial mid-sized mount, was slightly more accurate and a little smoother at high power to use. Anyhow, I looked at a lot of objects with this thing. One of the nicer things I saw was the Veil Nebula with the two inch wide field eyepiece and an O3 filter. It has just enough aperture that the O3 filter doesn't completely obliterate the veil. You can kind of drive around and look at it. It's a lot of fun. Okay, so one other feature I wanna draw your attention to. These things are pretty versatile. The tube separates from the mount, and you may be able to see this from where you are. There's a knurled knob here, and all you have to do is loosen that, and the tube comes out. So this plate here is what they call a Vixen compatible plate. It is the closest thing that we have in this hobby to a universal mounting system. Most, if not all, small to mid-sized telescope mounts out there will have the ability to accept this plate. So some people will buy these and, you know, take this off and put it on other equatorial mounts or put it on other Altaz mounts or even on a manual mount if you don't mind pushing the thing around at 1500 millimeters. So the opposite is also true. So in other words, you could take this tube here, let's set this aside for a moment. I set this over here. You could take the mount and put other optical tubes on it. So we've got here our trusty short tube 80. This can go on here like this. 
and you can use this tube on here and you have all the functionality of the fancy electronics on here. You could do that. Or you could take the trusty deforked ETX and you could do the same thing. So one thing to be aware of here is when you put something on this next star, you have to be sure that whatever on here is short enough that it doesn't, uh, you know, it, it, if you have a long refractor on there, it's going to hit the base here. So it's one caution you need to be aware of. So, you know, I've enjoyed my time with this telescope and I think even more so than the fancy electronic upgrades, it's those little touches that they've done that have made this telescope easier to use and more pleasant to operate than my Nexstar 6 SE. I'm talking about stuff like the built-in molded handles here, the big clutch knobs, and the built-in battery. Those little quality of life upgrades just make this much easier to use. So again, we don't have time to go through all of the electronic functions on this. We'd be here for quite some time. If you really want to delve into all of those functions, you can start with the Celestron user's manual, which I think is really well written for what it is. If you want to delve deeper into this, there's a couple of books I can recommend here. Michael Swanson has a Nexstar user's guide, and then there's a book by James Chen specifically on the Nexstar evolution and on the Sky Portal app. And by the way, that app, I would consider downloading that even if you don't have a telescope. That thing is powered by a piece of planetarium software that we use quite a bit. And in fact, when I was down in Chile several years ago, that was the app that I used to teach myself the southern sky. But anyway, these books are, if you know that they're Springer Press, uh, these guys both do a really good job, by the way. They're not the cheapest books you're going to find, but they're printed on high quality glossy paper. There's a lot of color illustrations. And even if you don't have a Nexstar, these books are actually pretty good reads because they go through some history and model numbers. So as far as other options go, I should mention that you can get the same C6 optical tube assembly on Celestron's AVX mount. That's their mid-sized equatorial mount. That's the mount that I use more than any other. And it's about the same price as the Nexstar. Ooh, that's tempting. Choices, choices. So there you have it, an overview of the Celestron Nexstar 6 Evolution Series. I hope this video has given you some information to determine if this telescope is right for you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.